Hello friends, hope you're well. This is a chat GPT tutorial for the legal sector. Now I've become slightly obsessed with chat GPT, so I thought I'd do this tutorial to really position how the platform works and how it can be used now in the legal profession and the wider community. Now I've used the word now there, I'm recording this in March of 2023. So if you're watching this 12 months from then, I think it's a pretty safe bet that this is going to be badly out of date, but I hope it's of use to all of you now. The second point to make is that ChatGPT is a really useful tool for production of content. However, lawyers, you know how important it is that we get things right, and I wouldn't want anyone watching this tutorial to think that the technology is at a stage now which can be relied upon, which is 100% accurate. It's a useful content production tool, but you're watching this at your own risk. That's the lawyer and me. Now, without further ado, we're going to get straight stuck in. I'm going to show you how you access the ChatGPT platform. And of course, I'm then going to move on to the best uses of the platform for the legal profession. So off we go. Okay, so here's the screen. Now, I'm going to think that my audience are a sophisticated enough bunch to deal with a sign-up process. So I've already got an account, so I'm not gonna teach you how you enter your name, you enter your email address, and how you prove you're not a robot. Because any robots watching, you're not welcome at the moment. Can a robot sign up for ChatGPT? That's one for a different tutorial. But for now, I'm just going to log straight into my account. This is www.openai.com. So that's where you have to go to. I'm log logging in via my Spiron Group account. I'm using my Spiron Group password, and then I am straight into the platform. Now, you'll see here, this is at the bottom, you'll see at the bottom of the page, this is the newest version of, of ChatGPT. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you the areas that I think are most useful. These are the areas I use this for, and I find them extremely helpful. So here we go with number one, which is creating a social media post. I spend a lot of time creating social media content, and I like to make that personal, but the problem I sometimes have is just getting the ball rolling in terms of talking about an issue. So I'm going to give you an example now of how you might produce a social media post about the importance of risk-taking in the league. Oh, hang on, I'll do another one. What is it? Um... This post is about how automation is important in current legal process. So create LinkedIn post for a legal audience talking about how important Automation is to current legal process. Let's go. Look at this. Now, there's a few things here which I want, I want to just say. What ChatGPT is doing here is it's reaching in to the internet and it's pulling out examples of this content from what already exists. What I really like about this is that it's a punchy post. It also clearly addresses the audience to which it is addressed. I think it's pitched at an appropriate level and it covers some important generic points. You'll see in here that we're talking about accuracy, efficiency, reducing cost, Obviously, this does not necessarily mean that you would use this exact post on LinkedIn, but it certainly gives you a platform from which to apply your own um, style to, to apply your own particular experience to, things like business names, hashtags, 
but I find this very useful in terms of cutting down time. And this took me, as you will see in a few seconds, and it would have taken me probably 10 minutes at the very least to create that post. So that's number one, create social media post. Number two, create a blog for website. Now, on my website, www.simongibson.com, you will see that I've got a blog se section where I generate longer form articles, which I hope are helpful, just taking a deeper dive in terms of some of the subjects which really interest me in, if it's the podcast, if it's in leading my own business, or if it's just in my general movements throughout the legal community. And I tend to do about 600 words in that. Now, you'll see that in the social media post, it was a very short instruction for ChatGPT. What I'm going to do now is try and be a little bit more specific in terms of the sort of blog I want to create. So how about this? Write a 600-word blog for website content for a legal audience discussing the importance in fact hang on, discussing the relevance of the metaverse to legal to future legal practice the article should be empathetic and should address the advantages and disadvantages. The article should conclude with three top tips for lawyers interested in the metaverse. So I guess that's the sort of instruction you might give to someone who's helping you write your content. Let's see how good old ChatGPT gets on. Look at this. There's a nice introduction there. Here's some advantages. Yeah, what I like about this is that it's giving us effectively a framework through which we can apply our own perspective and our own views but it's doing so in such a way that there are some really interesting specific points being touched upon. So, for example, there we've got the issue of jurisprudence. Remember that? Um, it's talking there effectively about how the metaverse itself might need a law. And that's something which I'm particularly interested in at the moment. I've got an episode of my podcast coming up uh, to discuss that very issue. Um so here we've got the three top tips. So very helpfully, ChatGPT has followed exactly what I've said. It's not only given the advantages and disadvantages, it's structured the post in such a way that those three top tips, so we've got thinking creatively, we've got the issue of privacy and security. What a great point that is. And then we've got a nice conclusion there. I think that would have probably taken me a couple of hours certainly an hour or more to write. Now, that will take about 20 minutes for me to adapt into my own style. So that saved me a ton of time. And I also think it's been able to produce something which is interesting and gives me the framework to be creative. Number two, so that's write a blog for a website. Number three, write marketing materials. So I know I've got a lot of people from the marketing community who work with the legal sector, who uh, engage with my content. And effectively, there are certain tasks that lawyers may require from marketing agencies, which both have to be strong promotionally, but also apply a legal perspective. And one of these, I think, uh, could be, for example, an invitation to a legal networking event. So I'm going to use this, and you'll see here that I'm moving away from just talking about providing specific details in terms of the way that it is structured. I'm actually giving ChatGPT here some instructions on what this networking event is going to look like. So check this out. 
write a digital invite from a law firm to guests being invited to a networking event on 16th of March 2023 at Love Lane in Liverpool, England. Yes, this is a real event. You'll see now. The event is being organised by Zeus Tech Solutions in conjunction with the National Legal Alliance. I'm going to this event and I'm really looking forward to it. The event starts at 5 p.m. I don't know if that's right, but let's assume it is. And will end at 7.30 p.m. At least for me, I'm a good lad these days. And that's absolutely when I start thinking about bedtime. I think there will be some stop outs after that, though. Um, end at 7.30 p.m. The purpose of the event is to provide all guests with the opportunity to network. And there will be press in attendance ChatGPT, what you got? This is for marketeers. A cordial invite, we all like one of them. You've got all of the details, you've got the event date, there's some oh, professional camaraderie. How about that? Drinks, canapes, relaxed atmosphere. And it's, it's asked for an RSVP. And I, the one thing I didn't put in was the date to confirm attendance, but it's interesting that it's asking for that. I think that's a really well-structured invite, isn't it? I'm not sure I would have very much to add to that. So number three, ChatGPT tutorial for the legal profession, create marketing material. Number four, digital marketing. I'm not a digital marketeer by background, but I've got very interested in some of the advantages that this area has to the legal profession. One of the areas that I'm particularly interested in is in search engine optimization. And of course, with SEO, what is really important is that you correctly identify your keywords, which will attract your audience, which your audience could be searching for, and that you apply them to your content, to your campaigns. But it's quite hard sometimes to get the ball rolling with those keyword examples. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT for some help on this, but it's really important that we're, that we're quite specific because of course, what keywords are required will depend upon what our audience is and will be dictated by where we are in the world. And of course, what area of law or what area generally we're talking about. So check this out. Produce 10 keywords for a search engine optimization review for a law firm wanting to attract new clients for conveyancing transactions in England. Hit me chat GBT. Let's see. Here we go. So they look 10 fairly relevant search terms. It certainly gets the ball rolling in terms of starting to analyze it it just it's saving that time isn't it in terms of in terms of your research and it's impressive again that the uh the wording of this seems entirely consistent with the sector we're in and it's obviously presented in a very uh, a very user friendly way so that's number 4 okay number 5 we're going to start getting a little bit more technical now, team, I was a litigator when I was in legal practice. And those litigators who are watching, they will know that preparing letters of claim in slightly more unusual possible cases can be a little time consuming. In addition, what's very important here, again, is the jurisdiction we're in. It's no point as preparing a letter for demand 
if we, if on the basis of Californian law, if we happen to be sat in England. So it's very important here, I think, that I'm specific with ChatGPT in that regard. And also, of course, ChatGPT is going to need an, to know a little about what the claim it is we're, we are addressing. What, what's, what's the details? So let's see how we get on here. Write a letter of claim on behalf of a claimant in England in relation to a to an alleged breach of contract arising from a failure by a defendant to deliver 100 podcast microphones by 17th of April 2023 Jacob's waiting for 100 podcast microphones by then so this is this is real life stuff um let's think about what this might actually mean to the claimant what's the what's the claimant actually lost because you're going to need that for the letter of claim aren't you as a result of this failure the claimant has lost income of 10,000 pounds which they wish to reclaim from the defendant together with all of the legal costs incurred. Right, ChatGPT, can you produce that level of detail in a letter of claim format? So here we've got all the details. So we've got the the nature of the dispute there. And we've then got this set out in, I think, quite a, 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 a very, quite a detailed fashion, but also quite legalistic. Now, I've got to pray a lack of knowledge here. I'm not bang up to date in terms of the relevant protocol in the civil procedure rules for this sort of dispute. If anyone has any feedback on this, on whether ChatGPT is reaching into the right corners of the internet, which I would think would be the civil procedure rules, and is pulling out the right law, which you'll see here, there's reference to the late payment, um, commercial debt interest at 1998 and the commercial debt regulations, because ChatGPT has correctly identified there might also be a claim for interest, even though... I haven't actually told it that. If anyone's got any feedback on whether ChatGPT is reaching into the right areas, that'd be much appreciated. But certainly this is a letter of claim that at the very least provides the lawyer with the framework to begin adding other details and of course making sure this is fully accurate because reminder, ChatGPT is a helpful content producer, but it cannot yet be relied upon for accurate legal content. That's going to change in the future. But for now, prepare a letter of claim. Next, produce non-disclosure agreement. Now, quite often what I hear from uh, other law firms, but also suppliers, is if they're in a relatively um, uncontroversial situation where they do want to protect confidentiality, but they don't necessarily want to incur legal cost. I'm not recommending that, but they quite they just want both parties involved in a discussion around a future project to commit to some level of confidentiality. Then they might find ChatGPT either a useful way to produce a non-disclosure agreement or as a useful template for their lawyers to review and top and tail it. Again, I'm going to make this quite specific and let's see how ChatGPT gets on with it. So prepare a non-disclosure agreement between Spire and Group, that's my business, and Instamed, that's one of our group businesses based out in Australia, relating to a project in which the health service in Australia is fully researched by Instamed 
with a full report being provided to Spiron Group. The agreement must be based on the law in Western Australia. That's where Mr. Meta based. And must emphasise the confidentiality of the project. The non-disclosure agreement should last, uh, should be for a term of five years and must and can, and can only be varied with both parties' written consent. That's pretty comprehensive. Will Chap GPT be able to pick all of that up? Non-disclosure agreements, it's all defined. And this is the sort of format I've seen when I've asked lawyers to prepare a non-disclosure agreement or in some of our standard templates. I think it's important to note here, I'm not suggesting for one moment that this technology will replace lawyers. Um, in fact, I see lots of opportunities for lawyers to use this for their benefit. But it certainly is very interesting that businesses and individuals can access this. Now, you see, we're going into quite a bit of detail here. This is the definitions section. We've got obligations. I've not actually told Chap GPT to include things like observations, but the technology here knows what I'm talking about. It knows what a non-disclosure agreement is. It's reaching into the nooks and crannies of the internet to produce reliable content. It's learning from what it's lear it's learning from what it's read on the internet. And it's also noting all of the information I've given. So it's providing the five-year term, but it's also making some really strong assumptions here around no license. It's dealing with remedies. It's talked about governing law per my instructions. We've got an entire agreement clause in there, which we know is really important. Now, so you'll see here that ChatGPT is a stop, but let me see if I can keep it going. Continue from point eight. Yes, it has. Now, you see, this does need a little bit of work, obviously, or quite a lot of work. But at the moment, I see this is in its very early stages, but you can chivy along ChatGPT by giving it those prompts. And you'll see here, this is all standard stuff that you would expect to see in a, in a, a non-disclosure agreement. I cannot guarantee that it is perfect, but certainly I think if you cut and paste that out and give it to a lawyer, um, they will be able to give that the once over for you and give you some reassurance in terms of what this looks like and if it needs to be changed. Look at this, it's great. We've even got a part to sign here at the end. So that looks like a pretty good non-disclosure agreement to me. So well done yet again, ChatGPT. Right, we're on to the penultimate top tip for ChatGPT for the legal profession. We're going to get really, really into the weeds now because I'm going to ask ChatGPT to actually produce a contract for services between two parties. So let's have a go at this. And I want to be as specific as I possibly can in terms of what this contract relates to and also in terms of things of like payment terms, length of contract, specific obligations of the parties. So let's, let's put some real detail in and see how ChatGPT gets on with it. Write a legal contract for services between... Zeus Tech Solutions, that's the legal tech business in the Spirant Group, and Joe Bloggs Law. That's a, I don't think there's a law firm called Joe Bloggs Law. Joe, if you're watching and you're not happy, then I'm, I'm sorry. But you can be a Zeus client. Um, Zeus will be providing a two year retainer for software development services for Joe Bloggs Law's case management system. The role of Zeus will be to work with the Joe Bloggs team to adapt and improve the case management system in order to increase efficiency. The cost of the services will be £2,000 per month, plus VAT. Zeus's work will be subject 
to a service level agreement, which will be annexed to the services agreement. There needs to be a prior termination clause based on either party providing two months notice. There must be a robust confidentiality and clear clauses around data protection and privacy. There must be a provision for either party to disclose a copy of this agreement to the solicitor's regulation authority. Very important that legal contracts provide for that if the service is being provided to a law firm upon request. Now, what I'm just going to see on this, I'm going to see if ChatGPT knows that this contract is in England and Wales. I'm just wondering whether the reference to the Solicitor's Regulation Authority, which obviously is England and Wales, and also the reference to pounds and VAT makes ChatGPT note that that's the case. Let's have a look. It's a big one, this services agreement. Check this out. So there we've got the case management system. We've got the term two years. We've got the role of Zeus. We've got the fees. We've got reference to the service level agreement and, and ChatGPT knows what it is. It knows that it's being, um, it's being annexed. Know what annex means. We've got the data protection and the privacy clauses. We've got the termination clause. It's spotted that we're in England and Wales and that's because of the reference, I think, to the SRA and to pounds. Well done, ChatGPT. You don't even need to be told which country we're in. You pick that up. We've got an entire agreement clause, which is obviously always sensible stuff, and we've got the signatures. So you'll see here that the quality of this tech is so good that a crucial part of this contract, i.e. the governing law, has been identified without us even asking it. So ChatGPT can draft contracts. Final one, guys. Now, this is going to be a really challenging one for ChatGPT because I'm going to see if it can accurately predict the outcome of a legal case. But I'm, I'm going to be fair here. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Let's see if they can, if ChatGPT can give us basically like counsel's advice on this particular case. So I was a personal injury lawyer back in the day. So I'm going to base this on a fairly standard situation that lawyers will face when they are approached uh, by a claimant who's been injured in an accident at work. Let's give it a shot. Predict the outcome of a legal case in England where a claimant has suffered injury after falling into a hole at the place of work. The hole was not surrounded by any warning signs and the room in which the fall happened was poorly lit. The prediction should make clear whether the claimant is likely on the balance of probabilities, remember that, to win at a court trial. Now, oh dear, it can't provide legal opinion. This is, this is outrageous. The chat GPT cannot make this prediction. Now, this is still really useful to know, isn't it? Because lawyers were not redundant just yet. This technology is not at a stage where it can always predict outcomes. But you see here, it's very helpfully diverted us to the general law. I.e. employers have got a general duty of care. They should be avoiding risks and mitigating them. There needs to be warning signs. And also it's talking a little about the sort of losses that can be uh, claimed on behalf of the injured claimant. So, Good, isn't it? Because ChatGPT is being very upfront here about what it can and can't do, but it's still reaching into those nooks and crannies of the internet in order to provide a guide to anyone who could um, want to take a look at this. My prediction is, is that in future years, there is no question that this sort of AI will be able to predict 
outcomes in terms of litigation and other sorts of legal dispute. But lawyers, you can breathe a sigh of relief. So the, uh, the chat GPT is not at the stage where it can stand in the shoes of counsel and advise a claimant whether they're going to win or not. Whew, there's life in the old dog yet. So friends, what are we concluding from that ChatGPT tutorial? Well, first of all, I think it's important to bear in mind that what ChatGPT is doing is not really producing and creating content from scratch. It's learned from a very expansive data set, namely the whole internet. And it's got the ability to reach into that data set and pull out relevant pieces of content and responses to respond reasonably accurately to prompts. What I find really exciting is that this is in its such formative stage. I think reasonable predictions for the future are that it will be capable for artificial intelligence such as this to learn in terms of things like the lawyer's style of writing in terms of things like a particular law firm's attitude to risk, in terms of a law firm's cost arrangement with their clients. So for example, if a client doesn't act in accordance with advice, ChatGPT might be able to follow that up with a request for payments for legal costs, various warnings about the outcomes of litigation and that sort of thing. But I think for the time being, lawyers must, must use this with caution, but certainly, lawyers should be thinking about the ways in which this can improve their practice. And that could be in terms of their efficiency. It could be in terms of their marketing campaigns. It could be in terms of the quality of their training and presentations. What I'm really interested in seeing as this artificial intelligence develops is whether it's able to learn from what has gone wrong in technology to date. And that definitely must include things like consideration of professional indemnity positions for law firms, thinking about things like identity verification, and also areas such as privacy and confidentiality. I'm interested in how clients might want to approach this technology in the future. Might there be a situation where clients are looking for discounts in pricing if they select a AI-driven legal model rather than one which comes from a real life lawyer like me and you. So hope you got some benefits and some value from that ChatGPT tutorial. I would love it if you gave me your feedback. And if you wouldn't mind subscribing to this channel, then you're going to get more of these hopefully valuable pieces of content moving forward. Speak to you all again soon.